I'm going to be working with this MIDI as an example of how to convert MIDIs to SM64 sound font, both in Anvil Studio and in game. You're going to need to download and install Virtual MIDI Synth, link in the description, and then download the SM64 sound font made by eDark. I will also link resources for instruments used in SM64 in the description. So, once you download and install Virtual MIDI Synth, you will open it up and get this menu. Here you'll see the sound fonts I have. To get a sound font, you hit the plus button, navigate to where it is, click it, and open it. Then you simply click it, and then hit OK, and you should have this available to use. So, now we'll go and convert our MIDI. So in Anvil Studio, you'll see the device here. This is the sound font it's going to use right now. It's using General MIDI. If you want to can change that, you have to click that, open Virtual MIDI Synth. Then now you'll get the new instruments of your SM64 sound font, which is loaded in Virtual MIDI Synth. And you'll notice it'll change the instrument here. So the first thing I like to do is rename this what the instrument should be for all of them. For drums, we won't convert that right away, and that's because for it's handled differently in SM64 than in general percussion. So now that we've renamed stuff, we know what it is. We're going to go ahead and just swap these all over. So you're going to want to click Virtual MIDI Synth. And now to know what instrument you should be selecting, you'll need the instrument list, which I have linked in the description. I have it here. And this is the name of the instrument as it appears in Epson 64. If you want a list of all the instruments in your banks, I will link the extended instrument list I use for extended bank C as well. You can find this here. You don't need that for now. So you will be looking for flute. Now if you're familiar with SM64 instruments, you know that there's not always a one-to-one -one mapping between the original ones and what exists in this one. The best flute we have is the pan flute. So we'll be selecting 28. And then as a quick check, you want to make sure you got the right instrument. You a piano roll, just hit it. And then you'll notice that sometimes you'll have to do the same adjustments you have to do in game usually. Just pitching this down, that doesn't destroy your ears. So I'll go ahead and swap over all the instruments of drums. Okay, so I've converted the rest of them, and then now we're going to deal with drums. So the reason why you won't, don't want to immediately convert drums over is that drums have a combination of instruments that are separate instruments in SM64. For example, C3, this is a bass drum. This is a snare. This is the hi-hat. The open. Or this is. And this is the cymbal. So cymbals, hi-hats, snares, and bass drums are all separate instruments inside of SM64, and there's also different SM64 instruments. So I like to just separate them by class. You can just do this by ear, so you just know what each instrument is. Um, you can generally keep toms, which are those tambourines which is 55 for this. And this one. Tambourines, toms, and 
Bongos. You can keep all of those in general MIDI. The other ones you want to all move out. So this one has snare, kick, hi hat, and crash. You want to move all of those out. It has one tom. So you can move the hi hats out and then you merge them together. So you move the open hi hats out. Close hi hat out. Check with this. Pedal hi hat. Then now that you have all of these, you'll merge them together to one track, and then we'll call this hi hat. And then now we can take this, convert this to our virtual MIDI. Want to change the channel? Make sure that's important. And find hi hats 19. So I'm going to do this for the rest of the drums. Okay, so you'll have some extra tracks for when you merged. Just delete those. And I like to do that at the end. Just because it seems easier for workflow reasons. Okay, so now that you have all everything separated into different channels, you just want to hurry up and make sure that everything is on different channels properly. For example, I went and added this to 11. There was already something on 11. When you're on different synthesizers, they won't use overlap channels, so it's an easy mistake to make. And then we'll check it out. So this is already way farther than what you could usually do before. Usually you had to just work with General MIDI and then convert it and using C604. Make sure that you get your balance right and then just keep that the process back and forth. And now it's way easier because you can just load the MIDI synthesizer and the sound font, sound font here and then preview it all. Do it all at once. So we'll see some stuff I want to do here, like lower down, pitch down the flutes. Uh, make sure the snares and the kicks are all on the right channels and the right instruments because there's several different ones. But that's not really an important process. You can just experiment and figure that out. Okay, so then once you're ready to import this to SM64, you're satisfied with how it sounds, you're going to want to do basic last minute stuff. So you want to make sure you save it, of course. You want to quantize everything, right? Because SM64 only reads every, every eighth note, they don't read 64th notes. So I like to just do it for 30 seconds should it make a difference if your song's good and then you want to hit repair a song when you move around stuff sometimes it'll duplicate MIDI events and that can lead to a lot of bloat so you will usually just get some stuff like this move unnecessary stuff and then you want to take one more listen to it to make sure it didn't break anything when it was doing all all those save it and then board it Okay, so to export it to SM64, you'll want to use Seek64. This is a program everyone's been using for a while. I'll just go over it very basically. I'll link it in the description. You'll want to load a ROM description. It comes with them. You want to load SM64. You want to import the MIDI here. It'll come with a command prompt dialog. You can see if there's any bugs in here. Usually it's pretty direct when it tells you there's a bug. 
And so now we'll go over what we have to configure in here to make sure everything's good. So first you'll have a volume. I like to just set this to 68 usually. And then we'll have the instrument channels. So usually you can just tell by the name what it should be based on the extended instruments list, which I have here. But what you can also do is use the sound font mapping. This second number here is the number of what it is. So we'll see here, channel 0, 1B is pan flute. And then we can look at our extended instruments list and we see pan flute is 6. And so I'll be referencing both of these just to make sure that I have everything correct. So we'll change 1B to 6 and then we'll just move on. And so once you're done, you'll hit save raw. And you'll just want to name it. You want to make sure that when you name it, you type .m64 yourself manually. This is because a save type is an asterisk, which means there is no save type. And the tools recognize the .m64 file extension only. And so now we'll want to preview this. You want to make sure you select the right bank. I use bank 12 always. It's me, Mario. And it's that easy. Being able to use the SM64 sound font is a huge advantage. It almost sounds exactly like it does in Anvil Studio now. 